All right, Ezekiel chapter 28. We're going to have a lengthy reading. Um, I pray it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, it's, a, it's just a blessing to be back. All right, Ezekiel chapter 28. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, this is Ezekiel, son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God. Now, I want you to really look at that. My pen died on me. Thus saith, look at this, the Lord God. Now in my Bible it's capitalized. The Lord's making a point. He's the Lord. And He's God. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart. Now I'm going to ask you something. Now I'm going to pray here in a little bit, but I want to ask you something. Where does pride uh, where is it birthed in the head or in the heart where is it yeah it starts in here and it'll tell us here, the Lord will tell us here in, 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 in the Scripture. We're in Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, we're going to start here. We're here in verse 2 right now. And look at this. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, look at this, I am a God. I need to get me another pen. Okay, see, as I go, God gives me things, and uh, I gotta pay attention to what He gives me. And I gotta mark up my Bible. Look at this. I sit in the seat of God. Hmm. Now I want you to think about these different phrases, these different sentences that we're reading here in this scripture. Really? I'm going to go through it slow. It's a lengthy reading, but I'm going to go through it slow. And now I said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not a God. Did you get that? Yet thou art a man, and not a God. I want you to really think about these things. Throughout my ministry in in counseling people and in, in, in counseling sessions, people who are under the influence of different different things, different uh, uh, problems. There, there. Uh, even a problem can influence your behavior, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be drugs or anything. It can just be a big problem and you're scared and you're worried and it'll influence your behavior and, and certain things will come out of your, 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 your demeanor that you don't mean to be so. Now I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to share something with you. I want you to pray for my daughter Diana. She's been dealing with pediatric cancer patients. And when I say pediatric, they're kids this age. 
uh, the age of that baby right there. And um, by the time she gets these these patients, Burrow, they're at the end of their life. They had already gone through different uh, uh, stretches of, of medical uh, 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 help. But by the time she gets them, there's really no hope. She's, she's there and she's, she's dealing with them. She's dealing with a doctor and they're trying to do whatever they can for this patient. And then they pass away. My daughter loves the Lord. She 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 she's she's clean. She she's she is who she is. Basically, an angel of mercy. But this this the the years of dealing with this. is affecting her now. She's dealing with death. And not only death, the death of a child. And it's affecting her demeanor. And I'm going to tell you something. It's no different. There, well, there's a, some differences, but not really. With combat fatigue. So when we deal with certain things, like, like she is now, she goes, she does 14-hour days. And uh, she's still dealing with school. So we pray for her. But what we're talking about this morning, different things. That disrupt our behavior. Now what do we read here? Because thine heart is lifted up. We need to realize that that pride in different situations, we may not even think it's pride, it becomes the source of the problem. And this is the base from which Satan has been able to launch his attacks. Are you with me? We forget. Well, I'm moving ahead of myself. We'll wait there. All right, here we go. Let's continue with, uh, with, with our reading. Um, uh, he said, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art man and not a God, not God. Though thou set thine heart, look at this, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Where does the root of pride spring from? I told you. Where Rome answered it. Right here. Not up here. In here. Yet thou art man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, look at this, thou art wiser than Daniel. 
There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Hmm. Get a load of that. Look at verse 4. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Hmm. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart, look at this, as the heart of God, there it is again, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw thy words against, look at the the beauty of thy wisdom. Think about what's going on here. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Swords, yeah, the, the, shall draw thy sword, their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Look at verse 9. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man. Now I'm reading this for a reason. I'm going to get to it here in a minute. And no God. Thou art man and no God. In the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Verse 11. Moreover... The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Now look at this. Look at verse 13. I'm going to ask you, some of you, who is he talking about? Who is this? Look at verse 13. I'll give you a hint. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Hmm. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, Look at this, the emerald and the carbuncle and gold. Look at this, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. What is that? What is he talking about there? His voice, his voice, it it was music. His vocal cords, God prepared him and he hit intricately and he, he done it. Just like all of us, every one of, in this room, right here, has a talent that God has given them. You guys have a talent that God has given. You know what your job is? To find it out. How do I find it out, preacher? Read your Bible. Serve the Lord. And it will come to you. (sighs) 
Thy tabrets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. And look at verse 14. Thou art, thou art the anointed cherub. What's that next, that next phrase there? Read it with me. That covereth. We're in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse uh, 14. Ezekiel 28, verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Hmm. Covereth what? You know where this dude dwelled, man? He was, he was, he, he was the, the, the hovering angel. He was there at the throne of God. Can you imagine? An archangel. God created him with his hands, with his words, with his design. And he'd done that so he can sing to God. But something happened. Something started growing in here. Right in here. Of this angel. And, and, and his demeanor changed and, and his behavior changed. Things were going perfect, but something was happening in his heart. Whew. Thou art the anointed cherub, verse 14 of Ezekiel 28, that covereth. And look at this. And I have set thee so. Ha. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was, look at this. What's that word there? Thou was, come on, talk to me. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect in beauty. Perfect in stature. Perfect in all his ways, except something started happening. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Not only was he covered with every precious stone, but he walked on them. Are you with me? That was his path. He was, he was perfect. Look at this, verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways, look at this, from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Things can be going so perfect. 
Even, even ministries can be going so perfect, but there's sometimes there's things that, 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 that ministers and, 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 and preachers and, and teachers and, and, and laborers for the Lord. There's something there, something there that's, that, that, that God calls iniquity. And God calls you on it. He may not call, he hasn't, may have not called on you yet, but he will. See, God constantly is searching the hearts of his children. Constantly. Why? So he can take care of them and help you. But this fellow was past all hope. By the way, this fellow wasn't his child. He was a created cherub. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee. Look at that. What's that phrase there? With violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, look at this. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee. Look at this. O covering cherub. From the midst. Look at this. Of the stones of fire. Look at verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Do you know when we're walking in sin and we are constantly uh, 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 profane or, 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 or doing stupid things that, that we can corrupt the wisdom that God's trying to give us? It's amazing. It truly is. And then, and then we come to a to 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 a, to a, a, a situation in our life, and what do I do? What do I do? It happens. Happens to all of us. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities and by the, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. Hmm. I was looking at that. And I was wondering. Hmm. Look at that, look at that. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. Our own hatred and anger and bitterness that 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 that, that fuels this in the heart which 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 produces that that pride it'll it'll consume you if you ain't careful you might say oh, I'm all right I'm all right I'm all right I'm all right now you may be all right now but like an old preacher said there's a payday someday and we got to be careful Brother Ernie, why are you bringing this to us this morning? I don't know. God said, here you go. Deliver this. 
I'm delivering it. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and they, they, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of, of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And then verse 19. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never and never and never shalt thou be any more. Hmm. The pride of Tyrus' king. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, be with us this morning. Guide us through this lesson, I pray. Help me, Lord. Don't even let my own pride rise to the surface. Help me to be humble. Help me to be the servant you called me to be and bring this lesson to thy people. May they be blessed and grow. May we all grow a little bit this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now don't forget, pride was the first sin in God's universe. <laughs> That's what it was. Pride. Pride. Pride, 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 pride. Before Adam and Eve were ever created. Pride was already here. <laughs> it's crazy. Before Adam and Eve were, were ever created and placed in the Garden of Eden, the angel, Lucifer, who stood in the very presence of God, allowed, allowed his heart to swell with pride. Do you know pride will give you a heart attack? <laughs> it really will. It'll split your heart in half, man. It'll do it. It will do it. Lucifer, who stood in the very presence of God, he allowed his heart to swell with pride. Well, he was in his exalted position. Standing before God. Just like, look at us right now. You know what? We're in the very presence of God. Do you know that? How's your heart? You young guys here, how's your heart? Really? Amen, sister. <laughs> Think with me. I walked over here this morning. I was thinking about all this. I was also thinking if you're going to laugh at me because I was wearing these clothes that my son bought me. All this stuff's going through my mind. You know, all these different things. Asking myself, asking the Lord, do I, is there pride in me? I'll tell you the truth, sometimes there is.
And I'll confess something to you. I was kind of prideful when, when I went to my home church this past few, uh, Sunday. I was going to give them a 1 4 in the preaching, but I didn't. All that that goes through 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 your mind. But the Lord said, settle down. I will speak to them. I will teach them. I will help them. Just like here. Lucifer, who stood in the very presence of God, his pride led him. Let me tell you what pride, what, what, what does pride produce? Who, who can answer that? Come on, what does pride produce? The very first, uh, 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 Sin in God's universe was pride, but after that, what did it turn into? What happened to Adam? What was it? I want you to get this. What do we deal with a lot with young people? Rebellion. How do you like them apples? Rebellion. What happens when, when something happens at church? Someone says something we don't like. I'm going back there. That's rebellion. Are you with me? That happens. And many times, when, 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 when we're in our church, we said, oh, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. We go back on our own word, on what we say, just because something that was said. Just because something that was said. Misunderstood. And we throw all that that God's trying to give us and use us for away because of pride and rebellion. Ain't that it? Now, if I'm wrong, throw a book at me. <laughs> now, think with me here. Let's, let's do a little bit of growing up this morning. All of us, including me. Again, his pride led him into foolish, foolish rebellion. Now, is it any wonder then that the one who became Satan would use pride as one of his most effective weapons on you. On me. Now I was proudful, very proud. You can ask my wife. I came back from the military. I thought I was something else, brother. I was it. I'd done things most people would never do their entire lives. Then I got married. Once I got married, everything was done. Everything was for her. Everything. Everything was for her. Everything was for my kids. Though I still struggle with pride. for her. Let me tell you something. Once you get married, 
pride goes out the window. You can be proud of your children. You can be proud of your marriage. But what I'm talking about is that pride that, 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 that builds a wall between you and others. Between you and God. Even between you and your spouse. It happens. Are you with me? If you were with me, say amen. All right, we're good. Now think about this. Pride will lead you into foolish rebellion. Now, as we have seen, we see pride opens up we are opened up pride opens us up did you get that pride opens us up to satan's influence okay now we already we, we looked at, at at pride's origin where it began among the angels in heaven itself. Did I read it miss? No, I did not. Pride originated in heaven. And we can see this by looking at Ezekiel 28, which we read 11 through 19. Now I know I dealt with other preachers and teachers and I even heard scholars, Bible scholars debate whether this was true or not but I read it and I can see it and I can understand what I'm reading thank God notice there's changes in, in references in uh, uh, 28.2 from prince to king in 28.12 and it uses these both different different words and uh, what I put here was Hebrew words. Now, think with me. Besides all that, and I'm not no scholar, Satan's transgression is, was found in verse 17. Okay? Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. I wrote that. Isaiah makes a picture clear when he declares, How art thou fallen from heaven? Now we can go there right quick. Um. Uh, I think it's Isaiah 14. I believe. I think. Yeah, Isaiah 14, chapter 12. Look at this. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said, look at this, where? For thou hast said, where? In thine heart. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Look at verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will, I will, I will be like the Most High. Pride. Pride. Five I wills. Showing this dark angel's prideful rebellion against God. Let 
Who was Lucifer speaking to when he said these things? <laughs> Think about that. Who are we speaking to when we speak foolish things? God. Are you with me? It's an amazing thing. When, when, now look, when all this it, it comes together, and I'll put this together. I won't have time today, but I'll do it next Sunday or something. Now think, what am I doing with what God is giving me? What am I doing with it? I settled that question a long time ago under the ministry of an old evangelist. Because every time I was sitting in that pew and he was preaching, I'd get slapped up and down. Because I was proudful. I would even treat her bad sometimes. I was proudful. One evening after church, I stayed in there and I talked to this man. I sat there. I said, Pastor, I don't know what I'm doing. His feelings well up in my heart and I don't know. I don't know what to do about him. I think about him, it still hurts. He told me, he said, son, I was in the service too. And I know what you're going through. He goes, but you know what I did? I gave it to Jesus. And I left it there. Never picked it up again. If you're dealing with that, give it to Jesus. And never, never pick it up again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time of study we had. <laughs> Lord, how I love your word. It's so mind-blowing, so heart-throbbing, so instructive. Lord, help us to walk in that way and Pray and ask for that wisdom and then pray that we don't corrupt it. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen.